Good morning and welcome back to session 4 of uh, your introduction to polymers. Uh, last class we have been uh, seeing about the uh, natural polymer which is uh, cotton, how the structural arrangement is and uh, the tenacity, elastoplastic nature as well as the hygroscopic nature of cotton was discussed and this class now we are going to discuss about the synthetic polymer which is uh, nylon. Nylon, the properties of nylon, what is the structure of it, how hydrogen bonds are present in nylon, etc. Coming to the class, synthetic polymer, one example that we are going to see is nylon. This is the structure of nylon. You can see the linear polymer chains that is present in nylon. I have drawn three different linear polymer chains here. Let us, uh, what is this nylon? How it is formed? We have already seen this example. This is formed by the reaction between adipic acid and hexamethylene diamine. Adipic acid is CH2 4 times C double bond O, OH. And hexamethylene diamine is CH2 6 times NH2. This is adipic acid and this is hexamethylene diamine, right? Removal of water will be there. You take n molecules of these two, the product formed will be ultimately this one. So, I am removing this OH and one of the hydrogen here, C double bond O, CH2, 4 times C double bond O, CH2, 6 times NH. You can see the structure that is depicted over here. The structure is directly depicted over here and this is nylon. Each linear chain, it is held together by means of weak forces of attraction. I am drawing the hydrogen bond here that is formed between two chains, two chains, uh, two chains of, uh, two linear chains of uh, polyamide. So, if you see the property, they are linear in nature and uh, nylon polymers uh, are uh, separated this if you see they are separated by CH2 n times and CO NH. You can see this CO NH and CH2 n times this is a nylon uh, segment they may be either parallel or anti parallel. So, this is how a nylon segment is and there is polarity uh, to negative charge on the oxygen atom. You can have the polarity of oxygen atom as negative and slightly positive charge on the hydrogen atom. So, delta minus and delta plus is there. Positive charge and negative charge is found uh, here and um, you can have the other important group is NH2 which is found in the ends of the polymer. You can see this NH2. This NH2 may also be found at the ends of the polymer if the polymer is having an end. So, this uh, is important and main thing is you have the hydrogen bond which decides the uh, polymer uh, system. Also, this if you take this you have 65 to 75 percentage the structure is crystalline and 35 to 15 percentage amorphous character. So, crystalline character is very much more compared to that of the amorphous character. The polymer distance is also short which is about 0.3 millimeter only and hydrogen uh, bonds can be formed across a maximum interpolymeric distance between 0.5 millimeter. So, as the chains, the point distance is only 0.3 millimeter, the hydrogen bonds that is formed are very strong. Uh, so, uh, compared to that of the uh, what your cotton system. Now, what are the properties that is taken over here? Why does nylon make a good fiber? 
so nylon makes a good fiber due to the intermolecular forces see you can see the covalent bond that is formed here and the stable hydrogen bond that is present the most important uh, uh, for the force in nylon is hydrogen bonding and this nitrogen bonded to hydrogen atom of one nylon chain forming the hydrogen bond between the double bond O, C double bond O of the other polymer chain. So, this is very tight and therefore due to this intermolecular forces, nylon will act as a good fiber and it is having a good strength. Mostly they form thermoplastics. Which is very tough. This is used in the bristles also of your toothbrush. Bristles of the brush. Okay. So and it has more of the crystalline nature. It has crystalline structure also. If you see the elastic property, it has a good elastic property. You can see the chains here. It has only carbon and linked over here. So, the elastic property is very good. Where the hydrogen bond also, it lets the nylon chain to slide over each other. So, it can slide uh, up and down. One chain and the two chain, you assume in three dimensional space, it is sliding down one another. So, it allows the slippage. Even if the hydrogen bond breaks over here, it reforms therefore there will be no wrinkles at all the wrinkle will be uh, very less but there is a limit for that you have only 22 percentage elasticity if that if uh, if it is uh, stressed beyond that then the bonds will break okay and it is very tough and durable because the hydrogen bond distance it is only 0.3 millimeter and it is hygroscopic or not no due to this crystalline nature the lesser the amorphous region uh, will not allow any water molecules to enter therefore the crystallinity uh, will lower the hygroscopic nature of the nylon okay now thermal properties if you if you see they have poor heat conductivity and low heat resistance so uh, when you heat nylon chain easily the bonds will break this bonds will break easily but again they are reformed to heat also they behave similar to that of the stress when you apply it so thermal properties is also not good what happens is nylon will melt initially when high temperature is applied, nylon will melt and after that if very high temperature is applied, it will burn. So, that is what uh, happens to uh, nylon when you uh, uh, subject heat. So, if you see the synthetic polymer nylon, I have given you the chain structure, how it is formed and why nylon makes a good fibre. It is elastro, the property, it is elastoplastic pro nature, hygroscopic nature as well as its uh, thermal property. And next, uh, let us move on to the next one which is classification based on application. So, based on application, it is classified into plastic, rubber or elastomer and fiber. We saw two fiber as examples and now we will move on to plastics. So, plastics can be molded into shapes by heating and by applying pressure. So, you have two types of plastics, thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics. Thermoplastics, they are formed by addition polymerization, uh, which we earlier saw directly there will be no removal of products, no removal of uh, byproducts. And here there will be byproducts. This is formed by condensation polymerization, thermosetting. Next, they are linear long chain polymers similar to that of nylon and uh, cotton or be formed. And here you get three dimensional network polymers similar to your bakelite and your other urea formaldehyde resins. Next, you have the third one is on heating, they soften. Thermoplastic on heating they soften whereas thermosetting plastics they will be very hard they will not soften. 
and uh, they are soluble in organic solvents thermoplastics whereas they are insoluble in organic solvents and they can be recycled because on heating they soften it can be remolded into any shape whereas here it cannot be recycled examples are polyethylene pvc bakelite for your uh, thermoplastics polyethylene and pvc for your thermosetting plastics it is bakelite so if you see the difference between thermo and thermosetting plastics uh, uh, so these are the differences addition condensation linear long chain three dimensional soften on heating does not soften on heating soluble in organic solvents insoluble in organic solvents recycled cannot be remolded or recycled polyethylene i have given you the examples here next if you see fibers natural long chain or artificial long chain fibers are available and uh, molecular weight of this fiber is uh, 15000 if you take fibers natural long chain fibers and artificial long chain fibers are available natural long chain fibers we saw the example of cotton and artificial long chain fibers we saw the example of nylon the molecular weight 15000 or more should be there and the crystalline they have if uh, the polymer is crystalline they will gain strength and the polymer is amorphous they will gain stretch so as we have already discussed much more about this uh, with examples uh, we will go to elastomers so elastomers or high degree of reverse or elastic deformation that is you can stretch seven to eight times length they are termed as elastomer one good example is styrene butadiene rubber which goes the polymerization copolymerization between 1,3 butadiene and styrene so I have a buta group here 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 1 position, third position, I am having a double bond. So, 1, comma 3, butadiene, styrene. On copolymerization, you have the shift of electrons here. I will indicate this. A new bond is formed. So, you are going to take n molecules of each. This is nothing but styrene butadiene rubber. So, one example of elastomer I have given here. So, uh, in this class, uh, we have seen how we have classified um, synthetic polymer which is nylon the properties that is related to nylon and uh, of course uh, the classification based on application we saw what is a rubber what is elastom uh, elastomer an example of styrene butadiene rubber and uh, we also saw the other examples for plastic what is the differentiation between thermo and thermoplastics uh, and so on now uh, thank you for the session